folks should be interested in this show, Doug, because it was taped over at the Aurora and District, which I was not aware of, but it was it's the Aurora and District swimming pool. Yep. It was taped uh, at the last meet of the season, and there was Aurora, Newmarket, and Bradford. Uh, sorry, Aurora, Bradford, and Newmarket. I have to put Newmarket down at the bottom because that's where they belong. But anyways, Aurora, Bradford, and Newmarket were in this uh, meet, and Aurora fared very well. Uh, they won the meet, and there's a lot of good swimmers in this town that I were, I'm, was not aware of till I got over there. Yeah. But I was there with uh, Rosanna Matthews, who is the uh, head uh, girl over there. She's a head honcho at the swimming pool, and uh, she did the color on the on the actual show. And I think the folks are going to find the next few minutes of our show very interesting tonight as they watch the swim meet from the Aurora Town Pool. Well, they had an interesting uh, picture in the paper, and of course everybody in town who's associated with minor hockey in, in town uh, knows Alan Dahl is a fine hockey yes. player, and I saw him in the paper doing, I think, the uh, the butterfly or something in the paper, and I understand that he won a, a couple of races uh, there too. Oh, eh? won every one he was in as far as Did I he? know, and uh, like the ones, the ones that we watched are taped over there, and uh, Alan's a very strong swimmer. Yeah. Yeah, he's a big, he's a big lad, big and he, he's yeah. a muscular young boy, yeah. and he, he gets in that pool. He really means business, Good. and I don't think anybody could catch him. Good. He really did. He showed well over there, Good. as did all the Aurora swimmers. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, stay tuned and watch that, folks, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Yep. What the heck is going on at the Smith's house? They're discovering Canada's first all-sports channel. The cable TV channel that puts you right in the middle of the action. Wow! They're discovering TSN, the sports network. Every day, the sports network brings you a wide variety of professional and amateur sports. You'll see major games and events from across Canada and around the world, plus news and behind-the-scenes reports. With the Sports Network, you're right there, right on top of the action. Call your local cable company to bring the action into your home 24 hours a day at a price that makes TSN a winning value for every sports fan. For the variety of sports you want, the quality coverage you enjoy, turn to the Sports Network. Call today. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another uh, part of Sports Beat Aurora, and we're at the uh, Aurora and District Swimming Pool today, and we're taping the York Regional Summer Swim League. And the first, uh, the first one we're going to uh, show you here on uh, camera today is the uh, let's see, what do we have here now? The 13 and 15, 13 and 14 year old, uh, 50 meter uh, breaststrokes, and that's uh, two boys in Aurora from Aurora, and that's Craig Lawrence in lane five, which is the furthest one away from uh, this side of the pool, and we have Sean Roman only in lane four, and a boy from Bradford in lane three. And it looks like uh, it's pretty well neck and neck. The two Aurora boys are uh, uh, basically ahead on this. Craig Lawrence looks like he's coming in first. We have Sean Romanoli in the uh, in lane four coming in second, and the boy from Bradford in, uh, in the lane uh, three, that would be, coming in last in that part of it. And there they go down to the other end. And again, we have young uh, Craig Lawrence ahead with Sean Romanoli coming in second. It looks like it's going to be a close race, and the, the lad from Bradford here is uh, back quite a ways. Again, it's hard to tell from this point where Craig Lawrence is, but I believe he's ahead of Sean Romanoli, and it's the first and a second on that, and uh, they're at the far end, and it looks like Craig Lawrence, Sean Romanoli, and the boy from Bradford. So uh, we have uh, two Aurora boys uh, finishing in that, and we have uh, on, on um, the mic here with me now Rosanna Matthews. Rosanna, you're uh, sort of uh, in charge of the pool this year. Are you the manager? Or, yeah. Uh, and how yeah. about the swim team? Are you in charge of the swim team as well? Yes, I am. How are they doing? We're doing really well. We've won two out of the three meets. Um, we took a second place in Bradford by a slim 14 points. Good. And uh, we're hoping we're going to capture our Aurora Invitational meet today as well as the York Regional Summer Swim League Championships. Now, can you just tell us a little bit about the, the meets? Is this the wrap-up meet of the season? This is the final meet. We have one more left, uh, and that's just our inter-club mini Olympics for the Aurora swim team only. But as far as the comp competition for the summer goes, this is it. Okay, now how did Aurora, uh, how has Aurora shown so far this season in the, the, the various meets throughout the region? Uh, we've done really well. We won the first meet that was here in Aurora. We uh -huh. had to take a second place in the Bradford meet, and we won last meet in Newmarket. I see. Well, you're doing very well then. It's not too bad at all. No, it's uh, not too bad at all, and it's all been really close uh, racing, so everybody's been 
really on top of things. If you hear Rosanna giving a little cheer here every once in a while, you'll, uh, you'll know why. She's uh, really excited about what's happening here today and, uh, of course, is trying to encourage the, the team on. So uh, for, maybe you could explain to us, Rosanna, what's happening here in this particular race. Okay, I've got now. Derek Mattinen in lane five at the top of the screen, and he's just in a close second. Come on, Derek, pull it up. No and cheering then, now. <laughs> <laughs> we've got one of the swimmers from Newmarket and Bradford in the lanes four and five. Okay. Now this is, uh, what race is this now? We're talking the this 50 meter? This is the meter? second heat of the boys, 13, 14, 50 meter breaststroke. I see, okay. And uh, who we got out in front there? Maybe you can pick out your swimmer there. I think Derek's in a close second. It looks like the other swimmers come first in lane four, it is. Okay, so again, just uh, that was the 50 meter breaststroke and it was the second heat apparently, is That's that right? That's right, yes. And we're just about to start the girls 17 and 15 and over breaststroke. Now I understand you have to participate in a couple of these events. Is that the one that you have <laughs> to go right. in? That's right, this well, is my team to go. <laughs> just, uh, we'll excuse you here, and uh, we'll just uh, uh, get you after you're, you're finished your swim. If you don't mind coming back to have a little more to say about what's happening here. Today, Not okay? at all. So if you don't mind taking that microphone before you off, before you go, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Excuse me. Okay, folks, I've lost uh, my color commentator here, uh, Rosanna Matthews, and you're going to see the, uh, it looks like the 15 and 16-year-old and the 17 and over 50-meter breaststroke for the females and I'm just not able to tell you who's in what lane at this particular time, but uh, I haven't been given that information. But it looked like a very, very close race and uh, certainly uh, certainly going to be uh, by the time it finishes. We, uh, I think that's the young lady from Aurora that uh, reached the end first, and she seems to be neck and neck with the, uh, the party in lane four. I can't tell you who that is, but I think she's got a, a very, very uh, close edge on this race. And it looks like Aurora is in first place in lane five over there. Uh, coming into the uh, the end of the pool where they're gonna touch, and as I said, it's gonna be close. It uh, looks like Aurora in, the, in lane five touching first and perhaps uh, winning that particular race. So uh, we'll have to see what happens here. This, uh, as uh, Rosanna said, is a uh, wrap up of all the uh, York Regional Summer Swim League meets. And uh, it's uh, today, you'll find that uh, the, the clubs that are involved are uh, Aurora, Bradford and Newmarket. So uh, there's only three uh, clubs that are represented here at the meet, but by the looks of the crowd on the far side of the pool, uh, there's quite a few parents and uh, uh, in attendance, a lot of supporters here today. So uh, it's kind of nice to see this. In fact, I think this is the first time we've been able to uh, attend at the, uh, the Aurora and District Swimming Pool to actually tape the, the meets. Now we have uh, in this uh, particular uh, event, it looks like uh, Aurora being represented by Rosanna Matthews in uh, lane number three and uh, again i haven't uh, been made aware of who the other two swimmers are so we're going to have to pay particular attention to lane number three in this uh, this event now this is a combined event apparently and this one you'll be seeing now is a 17 and over open 50 meter breaststroke and again uh, rosanna matthews uh, into the water on a beautiful dive and uh, certainly looks like she's uh, going to put everything she's got into this uh, this event Rosanna's uh, out in front at this point. Uh, the other two uh, swimmers are in lane four and five, and as I said, I'm not sure who they are. There's probably one from Newmarket and one from Bradford, but which one is which, I can't tell you. Rosanna touches first, and she's off again down to uh, the finish line. Rosanna's uh, a good uh, body length out in front. Uh, Rosanna's wearing the yellow uh, bathing cap in lane number three, as I mentioned, and she's well on her way, I would think, to a first place finish in this uh, particular race. Everybody at the end there uh, cheering them on and uh, again Rosanna right out in front and no doubt is going to be the winner of this uh, event. Touches and we have uh, the girl in lane number five coming in second, the girl in lane, lane number three coming in third. So a nice, uh, nice event, uh, a good, uh, good showing by Rosanna Matthews and again that was in the uh, 17 and over open 50 meter breaststroke. Now, what are we having next here, Rosanna? Let's get back to the meet, and uh, maybe you could fill us in on what's happening next year. Okay, now we, this is a kind of a new event we've had for the past two or three summers, and um, we decided that there were a lot of adults that liked to swim, and they just felt that competing with the, the younger kids, as they put it, uh -huh. is just too much for them, and they swim their own event in the Masters category. So we're talking now of the Masters, which is 24 and over. The age That's group right. is 24 and over, and it's gonna be a 25 meter breaststroke. So that That's means right. they're going to go one length of the pool. That's right. And the first guy that finishes is going to be the, the winner. That's right. Do, do these adults, are they attached to any particular clubs? 
They are. They are attached to the to the clubs. Uh, we've got four ladies of our own, and Newmarket has, I think, four ladies also. I see. Some of them are ladies that are on their staff. Most of ours are just parents uh -huh. that come out and they swim with their children and swim to support the team. And it's no, really great no. to see the adults competing. Okay. Now, can you tell us who's going to be swimming for Aurora in this particular meet and in what lane they will be in? Sure. Um, Coming up in lane five is Lee Humble, and she's from Aurora. Mm -hmm. In lane four is one of the swimmers from Newmarket, and I'm not exactly sure okay. what her name is, or Bradford. And in lane two, way down here, is Freddy Locke, who is swimming a race that um, he kind of missed earlier in, on in the day. So is he he's doing really, that for his time, maybe then? Or? That's right. He's swimming it um, for his time as part of the 9 and 10 boys freestyle, uh, breaststroke. Uh -huh. And is he a, an Aurora swimmer as yes, well? Yes, he is. So we have three Aurora swimmers in this actual race, then, have we? Uh, two. Two, okay. Mrs. Humble and All right. And we don't know Locke. who the other lady is from Newmark. So uh, no. Mrs. Humble is in the far lane, lane five, uh, folks, and she's neck and neck with the, uh, looks like, uh, Newmarket swimmer. Yeah. And, of course, we have uh, Fred Locke here coming in just to swim this race, and I'll tell you, isn't doing Bad. And it looks like we have a winner from Aurora. Lee Humble came in first on that one, I think. That's yeah? right. That's right. So, we'll uh, have that's to hope good. That, that this to holds up with the second heat going now. All right. So what about this now? Who do we have swimming in this one? Can okay. In this second heat here, we have um, Peggy Boyne from Newmarket and Doris Todd also from the Newmarket. They're ladies that are on the Newmarket staff. Okay. And we have Peggy Novak in lane three here, and she's one of our our fantastic mums that comes out and helps us with everything. Well, that's good. So Peggy's in lane uh, number three, folks. So we'll keep an eye on lane uh, three. Uh, looks like Peggy's winking, wearing, I should say, a, uh, a pink, black, and white bathing suit, so she won't be hard to pick out. And the other two ladies uh, are from Newmarket, apparently. So let's see what happens in this particular uh, race. We hope she does well. Come on, Mrs. Well, you've got Novak. the sun out right now, eh? It's uh, it's looking good here today. Yes. A little questionable this morning. Oh, we thought we were going hit, to get hit with yeah. a storm. Well, here we go. Peggy Novak's in uh, lane three, and uh, we have two other ladies from Newmarket in lane four and five. So let's see what happens here with Peggy. And Peggy's... Uh, uh, really stroking where they're trying to get uh, to the front of the pack here, and it looks like she's not doing uh, too bad at all, Rosanna. No, she's come on, right Mrs. Novak, pull. Is she going to, uh, no, she's uh, sort of falling back on that one. It looks like one of the ladies from Newmarket, lane five, will probably fin finish first, and in lane four as well, and uh, Peggy's going to come in third on that. Would she receive points on that as well for coming yep. in third, of course? Uh, of course Rosanna? she will. Uh -huh. um, we have placings up to six. Mm -hmm. um, for all competitors. So. I see. So that was the second part of the Masters uh, 24 and over. That's 25 right. And we got, right. Right. We have one heat left, and that's Christina Templeton in lane four, uh -huh. and she's from Aurora, and Nora Dunning from, in lane five from Newmarket, who's also a staff member. Okay, so we have Christine Templeton in lane five or four? She's in lane, in four. lane f four. Okay. All right, so we'll keep an eye on uh, Christine in this uh, race, and they're off, and let's see what happens. Well, we're into the water anyways, and uh, we'll just see what's how. I can't really make out who's ahead here. It looks like the the other lady in lane five is from Newmarket, you said, is it? That's yeah. right. Okay, she's uh, she's out in front at this point, and That's right. uh, Christine, I think Christine got in the water. Yeah, and, uh, good job on this one. Well, there's a, there's a spectator coming up here, and Peggy, I want to congratulate you on their uh, attempt there in your third place. That's super. You ranked super, well. Right? I like to be first. <laughs> well, we always can't be first, Peggy, and that was a good try anyway, so congratulations. <laughs> Okay, who did we have win that one, Rosanna? We had Nora Dunning, one of the instructors from the Newmarket staff, I see. and then Christine Templeton coming in second. Okay, so she would get uh, whatever points are available for a second place finish in uh, that race, we, would she? What we do is we run them in heats, and then we have to take the cards and, and sort the times out from there, and that's okay. how they're done. So the ones with the best times will finish, go into the last race to see who's going to be the winner? Uh, we don't, we don't run a final here. It's, there's oh. just too much time to involved in running uh -huh. a final. We just sort the times in the heats and do and it that way. And the points from there, eh? I that's see. Right. Well, that's good. So uh, how about the, uh, you watch any of the Olympics this year, the swimming events? Uh, what I could, Canada? what I could. Yeah. And what do you think about the Canadians? <laughs> I thought it was just absolutely fantastic that we finally showed the rest of the world that we are good swimmers too. Well, that's good, and it's, uh, it's true. I think that uh, the next Olympics we're going to do a lot better. So what do we got going here now? We better get back to this, the 25-meter kickboard. That's and right. And this is six and under. The girls, six and, and under, 25-meter kickboard. Okay, now who have we got in, in the lanes? Can you okay, tell us Okay, in the first lane here closest to us is Laura Vanderpost from Aurora. Okay. 
And in the second lane is Jessica Templin, also from Aurora. Right. And in third lane is Megan Powell from Newmarket. Okay, so we have two Aurora swimmers in particular in this event, folks. And it uh, looks like the young lady in lane number one here, uh, the young Vanderpost uh, lady, is going to come in first on this one. And, That's right. Uh, the other lane there, what was his name again? Or, That's or Jessica her name, I'm sorry. Jess, Jessica, okay. She's uh, going to come in third on this one. Looks like we got a little wet on that one, eh? Just a little <laughs> bit of splashing. Ah, <laughs> no problem. Good swim, Laura. <laughs> Looks like a lot of fun, eh? That's uh, that's one of the events I'm sure that the kids look forward to that's and right. probably enjoy. Good uh, girl, nicely. Jessica. Well, uh, we put we've put this kickboard event in instead of using the butterfly for the younger ones because it's an awkward stroke. Okay, folks, here we are, Rosanna. We're uh, back at uh, the basically the last event on the meet here, and uh, this is called the Giant Relay. Now, yeah. can you tell us uh, basically what this, uh, this entails? Uh, this is a, a, a relay that was um, made up by the York Regional Summer Swim League to include a member from each age group from 7 to 17 in the swim meet, uh, now, in the relays. So okay. we've got the 7 and 8 girls that start here, and in lane... Three is the Aurora swim team. In lane two is the Bradford swim team, and lane f and lane four is Bradford swim team, and in lane five is the Newmarket swim team. Okay. So we're trailing a bit here, but we're hoping that Holly's okay. going to pick it up. So we've got uh, a lot of enthusiasm in regards to this one, folks. As you can hear in the background, uh, all those parents and supporters on the far side of the pool really right. really getting into this one rosanna so how are we in this one here tell us where aurora is now okay right now we're pulling up a close third to the new market swim team and bradford's out in front so we're hoping that karen's going to pull us up a bit here okay so he's uh, done a really good swim right. and here goes karen off the block what's her name now karen karen porteous okay karen porteous uh, she's in the lane uh, three, three right that's and right and she's, she's moving right along here she's coming into second yeah, anyways she's and uh, pulled right over second yeah. and let's hope she can pull right into first. Okay, she's moving very, very strongly in this one, and here she goes back down to the far end and towards the starting blocks, and who's waiting on the uh, block there for Rock? Uh, Erica Hoppy is waiting on the block there, and she's going to have some competition because both Catherine Jackson and Michelle Fodema are excellent swimmers from the Bradford and Newmarket team. Okay, so, there goes Erica Hoppy into the pool, and she's on her way down for Aurora in lane number three, folks. And she has a lot of uh, ground to catch up here. We have, uh, who's that in lane uh, number four? That's Katherine Jackson from the Bradford team. Okay, so Bradford is actually out in front at this point, and Erica's really, really moving hard she's on this one. She's just motor. Is she a strong swimmer? Ah, uh, uh, she's a very down? strong swimmer, very smooth. She never looks like she works. Okay, so she's really pushing it there. She's trying to get up in first place, and she's going to be close. She's going to be close when it comes to the block there. And we have Debbie Archibald waiting on the block by looking for the Aurora team, yeah. and then she goes. And she's just going to go. And she's going to move, and I think she's really going to fall off on this one. In fact, I think she's neck and neck with that uh, yep. lane uh, lane four over there. And I think that uh, Debbie's out in front now. Yep, Debbie she's is out in front it. as they come down to the end uh, of her first 25 meters, and Debbie's uh, going to be out in front, yep. heading down to the set. And we have one more swimmer ready to go on the block, and who's that? That's Janice Taylor, the other coach. I tell you, it's very hard for me to sit here unexcited. Because well, you I'm go ahead and cheer. Everybody else is, but don't be. <laughs> All right. Listen to these folks out here, and I think uh, Debbie's touching go, Here we go, and we have the uh, one coach of the Aurora Swim Club out in front, and it looks like we're going to do all right in this one. It's Joanna on, coming out there. So uh, here we go. She's out in front and moving very strongly up to the, uh, the end of the pool. She touches the first 25 meters and on her way back, and we have Aurora out in front by one body length at this point. Here we go, she's really swimming strongly. Aurora out in front and is going to win this particular event for the girls. Here they go, she's gonna touch first and we have Aurora coming in first. Aye! And Bradford second, is it? That's and Bradford second. And Newmarket coming in third. So that's super, what a finish, what a finish. Congratulations, uh, <laughs> Rosanna, you got a good girls relay team there. Yeah, it's you. the most exciting event, I think, of all of them because it includes somebody from every part of the team. Well, you told me earlier that this was probably going to be the, the grand finale of the uh, meet here, and no doubt, and I have to see, agree with what you said because I've seen it, that the uh, people really get into this event and the swimmers as well, and uh, just super Aurora finish, just great. That's great. Glad to Let's see that. Let's just hope the boys can keep it up. So the boys now will be uh, starting on the block, and uh, who have we got here from Aurora in the boys area? Okay, we've got in lane four our Aurora team, and we've got William Novak, who's going to start us off in the boys seven okay. and eight, and Neil Romanoli, who's going to do our nine and ten leg, 
And then we've got Mike McCart who does the 11-12 leg, Craig Lawrence who does the 13-14 leg, Steve LaFay does the 15-16 leg, and Alan Dahl the 17 and over. Okay, so we should have a very interesting finish to this one, eh? Oh, we're hoping. Yeah, I can tell you folks, uh, sitting here beside uh, Rosanna, that she's very excited about this, and uh, I can see why, because uh, my first uh, real meet here, and I, I can tell you, I, I enjoyed watching that. That was super. <laughs> well, Just I'm glad. Finish. Let's hope and, that uh, we can get some more people out to enjoy well, it, Well, I hope so, too, because uh, the pool's here, and everybody's welcome to come over to these meets, I'm sure, uh, well, next summer now, because we're probably uh, at the end of all the meets. But here we go, folks. Let's get back oh, to the William. actual uh, boys part of the relay. And again, William Novak is in uh, lane, four. lane four. So William is out in front. We've got a problem here in lane three. I don't know what it was, but William's... Uh, really putting in a strong effort here he's going to touch first and uh how come we had a guy down here what happened there that's the nine and ten and seven and eight year olds swim only one length of the oh, pool oh i see okay so who do we have now going down in the lane four for aurora we have neil romanoli and he's really, just really, really, going really strong along. really doing Keep well going, neil. neil's doing well there he's going to touch there and so uh, mike. who's this now mike mccart okay mike mccart's in the water will he have someone take over or does he go two lengths he goes two lengths so he goes 50 meters rather than 25 eh? That's right. Okay, Mike McCard is out there in lane number four, folks. He's way out in front, and uh, he's swimming very strongly. And Mike's going to touch, and uh, he is now on his way back down for his uh, second part of his, uh, or his 25 meters to complete his uh, particular part in this actual event. And uh, he's way out in front. He's doing very well. And I would think Aurora's in good shape in this particular part, eh? Oh, we're doing really well. We've got a, a very strong boys team. And as in years past, the Aurora Boys team has always been extremely Okay, who's strong. in the water now, Rosanna? We've got Craig Lawrence swimming our 13-14 leg. Okay, Craig Lawrence in lane four, folks. He is way out in front. Uh, the other two teams are struggling and have not even touched. Uh, they've uh, done their second half of their 25 meters yet. Craig has finished his first 25 and is on his way back down to the block. And we have Steve LaFay waiting for his uh, particular part in this uh, event and uh, should uh, be in good shape when he hits the water. He'll be in excellent shape to hold on. Okay, now Steve LaFay is in the water and he's on his way down for his first 25 meters in the, uh, the men's or boys relay. And the, uh, this again is the York Regional Summer Swim uh, League and it's the last uh, meet of the year. And Stephen LaFay is now touching for his first 25 and is gonna push off and head back down to the starting block where it looks like Alan Dahl is waiting anxiously and uh, after seeing Alan swim this morning, Rosanna, shouldn't be any trouble with a strong finish. No, not at all. Okay, Steve's still moving down in his lane. We'll touch the side of the pool, and in goes Alan Dahl for the Aurora Swim Club, and no doubt is going to uh, finish this uh, event in first place. Is there any rule that the swimmers have to get out of the pool after they finish? Or? That's right. Uh -huh. We don't want to crowd it. Right. It looks as though we're almost even going to overswim them with one They're swimmer left to go for the other Overlapping teams. them, really, aren't we? That's yeah? right. Well, here we go. And listen to the folks there. I tell you, what excitement. I've never seen anything like this for a long time. And Alan Dahl is way out in front. We'll touch the block. And All we right. still have Newmarket and Bradford having to swim their last 50 meters of this That's race. That's right. It's going to so be an exciting race between in. those two. Really? Look at them go. These guys here now have to decide who's going to be second and who's going to be third in this event. That's right. And uh, they're going to be close, Rosanna. There's no doubt it's going to be extremely close. And I think uh, Newmarket is in uh, lane, what, three? Mm -hmm. yeah, three. That's right. that Bill Fodimer? That's right. Bill Fodimer really pushing hard there. We're going to have a photo finish on this one. And I think Newmarket is going to touch first and come in second with Bradford third. What a race. What a race. I tell you, these yeah, people really, really get into this, don't they? Eh? Just so exciting to see. Now, what uh, does that bring us to? Does that complete the actual meet in itself? And we have to now wait for the uh, we wait for tabulation of the points. Eh? And then we uh, have our ribbon presentation. Okay, now how do you think uh, the Aurora team uh, finished? Oh, I can't really say. I haven't looked at the score sheets except for halftime scores, and I'm just hoping that we've done as well of, as we've shown we've done. Well, so. whatever happens, I can tell you that you have a lot of strong swimmers here on the Aurora Club, and uh, you and everyone else involved should be complimented on the work that you've put in towards bringing these swimmers along to the point that they're at today. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for coming well, down and seeing us. Well, I can tell you, Rosanna, it's a situation you must enjoy your job as well as your staff because uh, 
you know, when you see the kids in the pool and the smiling faces and the fun, and I mean, let's face it, somebody has to finish first and last, but uh, everybody seems to be enjoying what's happening, so there has to be something good about it. Oh, there is, and I've been involved in the swim team from as long as I can swim, and there's just nothing like it, so. Okay, well, congratulations again. We're going to cut off for a minute here, and uh, we'll, uh, we thank you and everyone involved today. Well, thank you very much for coming. My pleasure. Well, folks, uh, we hope you enjoyed the last few minutes of uh, the swim meet there at the uh, town pool in Aurora. And as you are well aware now, Aurora came out uh, in first place in that meet and I think finished up the season, uh, Doug, if I'm not mistaken, uh, winning the uh, overall championship Good. of all of the swim clubs in this immediate area. Yep. It's uh, me, funny to mention, too, while we're on the, the, uh, the swimming, um, I was talking to Rosanna Matthews over there at the pool on that particular day, as you well know by now, folks. She was telling me that registration in all swim clubs has gone down drastically. In fact, there were several swim clubs in the area that uh, have not even put in competitive teams this year because of that. And I find that kind of hard to believe, Doug, because uh, the facilities that they have, like they have a beautiful pool over here in Aurora, which is well used, uh, and uh, to show the amount of enthusiasm and support, you folks uh, obviously seen and heard the amount of uh, fan participation in this uh, particular little uh, segment, and I just can't understand how come it's gone down. Yeah, I have no idea. Well, we talked earlier, though, too, or last week, I guess it was, with Colin. The fact is that registration is down with all the minor stuff of lacrosse. Yes. I guess maybe, as we talked earlier, maybe the financial situation, I don't know how much it was involved in, in this pool, but maybe a lot of people are just pulling their horns in. I don't yeah, know. It could be, Doug, yeah. but I know uh, so swimming is not expensive. I'm not just too sure how much it was now, but uh, Rosanna did uh, mention yeah. it. But it's not overly expensive. Yeah. Do you know what I think it is? I think a lot of it is that kids are just getting sick and tired of being organized. I think that they want to do things on their own. I think they want to get out and do their own things on the street and have a little fun themselves without having some adult and you know as well as I do, and we could talk, uh, we could put a show on about this, the involvement of adults in minor sports. I think that the kids, myself, I think, are getting sick and tired of having adults supervising something that they'd like to be involved in, but sometimes over-organizing it and not having, it's not yeah. as much fun for them. Well, I'll tell you what, you come over and see David's room uh, after he leaves and the mess that's in. I'd like to be a little organization in there. Yeah, but that's I don't think that's overly organized. Eh? Although there was an article in the Star, I don't know if you happened to see the Star on the weekend, where they said a messy room and eating not properly, quote, our idea as properly is good yeah. for the kids because they're setting their own little uh, standards, their own little bailiwick. And yeah. uh, you sometimes I don't know. think that uh, perhaps adults try to uh, to really uh, rule uh, rule a, a child's life or organize it too much for them. Like I, I, I try. I know we all have to know. have rules, and I know we have rules at our place. And I don't think it's it's hurt our family. But I, I sometimes wonder, you know, like they have rules at home. They have rules when they play hockey. They have rules when they play uh, uh, lacrosse and soccer and baseball and swimming. Uh, there's always somebody there saying, okay, you can go now. You can do this, or you should do this this way, or that that way. Do you not think that sometimes uh, things do get a little bit uh, pressured for these kids? Maybe, but I still think most people want some direction, some idea yes. of where in the heck they're going. I, I agree and a little you. bit of, uh, of uh, supervision. Uh, yeah. At least but, I think they do. Anyway. But take a kid who's involved in three or four sports in a year, and he's always got somebody there telling him what he want, what he has to do or she yeah. has to do. Uh, for instance, the kid's out on the street playing street hockey or, uh, or in the ballpark, just, just firing the ball around on their own when there's no adults around. Just watch them sometimes. I've often watched, and, and 
just see how much fun they're having and how how much support they put into that particular event or whatever they're in because there's nobody there pressuring them. They can make their own rules, they can uh, do their own thing. And right. I sometimes think that that's part and parcel of why registration is going down in various sports because I think kids are getting involved or parents are getting their kids involved in too much yeah. and too much supervision. Can have a point and, there. Uh, I, I sometimes yeah, think that. Can have a so point. I agree that when the kids are out on their own, uh, they set their own rules, and in most cases, they're if they've got a head in their shoulders, do a pretty good job on maintaining a certain, uh, res you know, respect on. You know, I often think of, of, and I don't like to mention my job, and this one I won't mention it, but I often think of, of uh, a film I was showing several years ago. It was a training situation where uh, two kids were squabbling. Uh, one lived on one side of the fence, one lived on the other side of the fence, and they were having a real battle about something. The parents came out, and the kids were there still squabbling. The parents got into it. And the next thing you will see the two kids walking down the yard, hand in hand, and the parents are still going at it. And I always, often think of that, you know, I really do. Yeah, I can visualize because, that. Yeah. Because yeah. the parents will not give in, they will not stop, yeah. but the kids have enough sense to say, okay, oh. enough's enough, let's be friends and go on our way. And I, I still think that's uh, Well, you got a good point there. you got a good really, point. You know. Okay, let me talk, while well, we got a couple of minutes here, about the Canada Cup schedule that we talked about before the swimming meet. And we've got Canada, of course, is involved, Sweden, the Soviets, West Germany, United States, and Czechs. And we've got the schedule. I don't know if we want to run through it, but who are you going to call, uh, Lowell, for, uh, for winning that thing? I'm going with Canada. Going to beat the yeah. Russians? Yeah, I think so, Doug. I we really have a lot of faith. Year? I yeah. have a lot of faith in them. And I think that uh, this year, and you know why I say this? Because I think a guy like Wayne Gretzky, who's on the squad, I know he's been there before, but he's matured a lot in the last few years. I think Wayne Gretzky has the feeling now that there's more to hockey than money and he wants to be on this team because he's a true Canadian and I think uh, Wayne Gretzky or Wayne, the Wayne Gretzky's on this team are going to pull all these guys together and say let's do it for the country for a change and let's see what happens. Jeez, I hope I, so. I really think I hope that. So. I, I've, uh, I've a strong belief in that. I really but I don't think a club can be put together and play against the Russian team who's been working all year, 12 months a year, been a Canadian for many minutes. I agree they've got some new players in there mm -hmm. but I, I'm calling the Russians to win again. Well, Doug, yeah, yeah, I know, and I have to go along with this training all year stuff, and these guys are doing it, but, but when you train all year, and you, you're playing with certain guys all year long, the feeling, the country, the, the, the deep down feeling that you're playing for your country has to go somewhere. I don't care what anybody says, because you're not, you forget it. You have to forget it. Uh, unless there's someone standing in that dressing room before they go to every game with a shotgun or a gun and saying, okay, boys, if you don't, do or you're going back to the salt mine. I don't know, but I still think that that, that feeling is, has to sort of leave that team somewhere because it's too much pressure. Well, They're working together too long. I, and, I think uh, that, we, yeah, but we're in a different society. We're, we're really in an environment that's completely divorced from what the Russians are playing in. You know, the Russian... Thank God for that. Yeah, oh, thank yeah. God for that yeah. is right. Uh, some of these guys uh, say, hey, I don't want to play for, uh, for Team Canada, and they don't play. That's right. Over in Russia, if the guy is a hockey player and he's going to play hockey and he's a good hockey, he just can't say, oh, geez, friend, my comrade, I'm not going to play. No. He's there. He produces. That's right, but that's and what I'm saying. Is that where the feeling is? Is that when you're forced to do something, do you have the feeling? There's a nationalistic that's, pride that's there. The, uh, I, I think that they, they've got the, the legs, they've got the desire, and I'm going to call the Russians again. Well, I'm of calling Canada first. Yeah. United States yeah. second and Russia third. I'll put a couple of bucks on the Russia. Oh, you're on. No problem. Okay, okay? and I'm okay. going for Canada. So there you are, folks. Okay. And I hope that, uh, you know, in the next week or so, which starts on uh, September the 1st, by the looks of it, Doug. Yeah. Okay? First yeah. games in Montreal. Canada, as Doug mentioned, is playing West Germany. And uh, I think you're going to see one heck of a series. And uh, I hope uh, Eagleson stays away from the box. I don't think he needs to be involved in it as deeply as he is. That's my thought. Yeah. But uh, sometimes some of these guys in the sidelines that never played hockey or that much hockey get their finger in the pie. And that's the organization again. There you go, right back to point one like we were talking about before. Yeah. Too many organizers, not enough of participants. And uh, I think that these guys, I think Canada's going to do it. I okay, and I hope so too. Don't get me wrong, fans out there. I'd love to see Canada win it. I don't think they're going to win it with the format they've got. They've got some of the great shooters in the NHL. I don't think they can put a, a club together in a short period of time and beat this team. But it should be interesting, it and I'm be. looking forward to it. And uh, just like to mention one other thing, Doug. Uh, last week, uh, Carolyn and I and Sean went down to Markham uh, Centennial Arena and watched the taping of the uh, the uh, NHL Original Six. Oh yeah. And I'm going to tell you, there's still some good hockey players oh. down there. And one guy I'm really impressed with, and I have to tell you this because he lives in Aurora. Two of them, actually, but uh, more so Bobby Wall. Bob Wall scored a beautiful goal from the point the other night against uh, Chicago in a game that was uh, played down there, and uh, they beat Chicago, by the way, 2 to nothing. And uh, the other guy is Jimmy Harrison. He's playing for Chicago, 
But, uh, boy, I'll tell you, there's still some good hockey players oh, down there. And just to mention the teams sure. that were involved in the games, because some of the young bucks out there don't know them, Toronto, Montreal, Detroit, Boston, New York, and Chicago. Now, doesn't that bring, uh, bring back memories about uh, laying on the old living room floor? Andy Basket the out there? Andy Basket, I didn't see him. Didn't, uh, he uh, could have been. I didn't see New well, York. Well, he was with New York, I guess. That's right. Yeah. I didn't see that game. But last Sunday was the championship games uh, yeah. for that series, which will be on, of course, yeah. all the uh, all. Just an winter. aside, quickly, before fans, before we get off the air, is uh, Jimmy Harrison, I understand, has got his house up for sale. Where is Jim going? Have you ever heard? I have no idea. Yeah. I know Jimmy's involved with uh, Pepsi and a, uh, and a program uh, as uh, Bill White and several of the other NHL All-Stars there. It's, uh, it's a... Uh, Training thing. It's a it, Pepsi put out a uh, Pepsi Cola. You mean? Yeah, Pepsi Cola yeah. put out a, uh, a series of uh, uh, things for coaches and players. Oh yeah. I can't think of the name of it right now, or yeah. I give it to you. But he's involved. Not know whether that's taking him out of the area or not. I don't know. I, I have no idea. idea. Yeah. I don't know. But I know he was down in Markham playing for the Chicago Blackhawks. Good to hear. Yeah. Good to so, hear. Uh, yeah. Okay, fans. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. I hope you enjoyed the uh, swim meet and our uh, offhand comments and so on and so forth. And uh, hopefully we'll see you not next Monday. But the, the following the Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, yeah, I guess that's, it is, that's eh? right, Doug, yeah. And fans, have a good uh, long weekend. Tuesday, September the 4th, 7 o'clock. Don't stuff. forget that, eh? And we'll be here. All right, folks, have a good weekend. It's going to be a sport. See you soon.